start the clock. In five minutes, I'll take you through Avatar The Last Airbender, Crossroads of Destiny, a cooperative adventure game. And I'll include chapters for one, the comparisons to other games, two, the components and the aesthetic, three, the ever important mechanics of the game, four, how well the theme works, and finally, five, I'll wrap it up with an upside downside snapshot of the game. This is Board Games in Five on Legendary Tactics. The intention of this video is to give you a quick snapshot of this game in case it's on your radar. We received a review copy of this game, but we'll do our best not to let that influence our thoughts here. First question I ask when I play a new game is, what are the other games that inspired this one? And the most obvious point of comparison is Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Both games use a storybook style game board with different scenarios on each page. Both are campaign adventures with characters working their way across each scenario, mostly taking out minions and bosses. Gloomhaven is a much more complicated game and it will last you much longer. Avatar is much more accessible and also much lighter. I'm also reminded of the board game Horrified, but only a wee bit. Both games are cooperative, with enemies acting according to a deck of cards and heroes planning how best to accomplish the mission. Finally, the game Dominion is one that has a set of cards in your hand that you cycle through. And as you work through the campaign, the quality of your deck improves in Avatar. If we dive into the box a little bit, you can see a medley of really cool components here. And I'll start with the best bits. I really love the sliders on all of these character cards. These will track your health and they'll let you know when you take a wound, which is a card that gets added to your deck and harms your action sequence. Each character has their own power so that each player has a unique style of play. And players get their own custom deck of cards that add some connections to the TV series. Element tiles are used to earth, fire, water, air, they're in each scenario and they move around the board. Uh, we also have some enemy movers here. Um, this guy here is something that tracks your progress through the game, also with sliders. So that's pretty cool. Next we should move on to the mechanics of the game. With 10 out of 10 being the hardest game on the planet to learn, I'd give this a 4 to 5 rating. It's certainly not as hard as Jaws of the Lion, it's more along the lines of Horrified. And each player draws five cards from their hand and uses these cards either to do a basic action or they can perform the card text. And once all players have done their actions, the enemy cards trigger a reaction. So this is a grid movement game with players making decisions about how to maximize the different ways of using these cards. It can be played as a one-off mission or as a longer campaign with players gathering allies, completing puzzles, dexterity challenges to upgrade their decks. And each scenario also has special rules that change the gameplay as you proceed through the game. One of the main reasons that I wanted this game was because of the theme. I'm a huge Avatar The Last Airbender dork, and I desperately hoped that this game would live up to the series. And the game is structured so that you have to battle your way through familiar scenarios, beginning with Aang, having been captured by Zuko. Now purists need to get over the fact that you can play as Toph in this mission. As you proceed through the game, you'll visit Kyoshi Island, or maybe you'll have a battle with Admiral Zhao and so on, working your way through all the familiar moments of the show. I like that the game allows players to choose where they want to travel to at the end of the mission, A or B, so that there's some agency there with how you play. My kids really enjoyed the flavor text and types of actions on the action cards, such as uh, Sokka's tactical retreat, or I am not Toph, I am Melon Lord. So theme is not only a core part of the game, it's also, also the best part, in my humble opinion. There are some upsides and also some downsides to the game. The downside is there's only 13 scenarios and they play fairly quickly. So if you're a person who wants a lot of replayability, this might not be the game for you. Once you've been through the whole game, it likely won't return to the table for some time. And these standees, they're fine, but they're certainly not miniatures. However, for the price, these are perfectly reasonable components. My last critique is that you can't play as Zuko or Uncle Iroh. Sure, you can bring them in as allies, but it makes sense that you can't, but I'll bet a lot of players would actually really enjoy playing as Zuko. Now on the upside, it's a great board game version of the show. It's much more accessible than Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, but it still has a lot of the grid movement, the batty bashing fun, and the customization of your character through deck building. There's lots of game here for the cost of the game. If you'd like more board games in five minutes, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. But just being here helps us out. Now get out there, get gaming, and be legendary.